Retro Blasting is a YouTube channel for adult pop culture enthusiasts. Anyone under the age of 13 should only watch this channel with your parents. Retro Blasting is not a children's channel. Ever since I was a young teenager, I've loved the TV series Combat. Produced in the 1960s, the show followed the exploits of a rifle squad in Europe in World War II. Lieutenant Hanley, played by Rick Jason, and Sergeant Saunders, played by Vic Morrow, had been fighting since D-Day and led their squad week after week for five seasons through countless challenges and adventures against their Nazi adversaries. The series was groundbreaking in its day for humanizing the soldiers. Not all Allied soldiers were good. I, I gotta, gotta get my breath a second, huh? Sure, every time there's a dirty job to do, something happens to you. Well, not this time. Now move out. And some of the Germans weren't faceless goons. One moment of weakness at the battle does not make you a coward. The series was self-aware of the dilemma of soldiers in combat. War is horrible, but sometimes necessary and sometimes completely futile. Those are the orders. Well, orders! It's easy to give orders. It's easy to send men out to die. That's been going on here all day long. Kirby! The combat series is one of a few things I can point to with certainty that fostered my interest in World War II history. Yes, it's a fictional pastiche of World War II, and yes, it's almost 60 years old now, but it holds up remarkably well. When I think of the American fighting man in World War II, the first images my mind conjures up are Saunders, Hanley, Cage, Kirby, Doc, and Little John. Heck, I even named our cat Kirby after Jack Hogan's character from the series. Sergeant Fauntleroy down there in the basement playing with his radio. Well, it may not to be something important. Or we could get killed, that's very important. But one thing they've never made are action figures of the heroes from combat. And that's honestly shocking to me. When the chips were down, you froze. Who froze? You! Recently, my friend Gil alerted me to a website called Marauders, and they specialize in military action figures. But the cool thing is, you can build your own creations by selecting various modular parts, thereby creating your own cast of characters. Most of their products are modern military, as it's clear they've stepped into the vacuum left by Hasbro's total mishandling of G.I. Joe. But Gil was alerting me to something new. Marauders has launched a World War II range of figures. What? Within 20 minutes of browsing, I realized Marauder has provided everything needed to build a very close recreation of the heroes from combat. I dove in and spent the next four hours carefully selecting all the parts I would need to bring the six heroes to life. There were two choices of U.S. Army bodies, but there was only one choice for me. The brown pants with tan jackets scream combat over the all-green fatigues. It was a black and white show, but you can often see the contrast in their uniform pants and jackets. A few things were pretty easy to decide. Six guys, five helmets with visor straps, one camo helmet for Sergeant Saunders, an optional black beret for Cage, eight canteens, one for each guy except Doc who gets the last three. He always carried extra water. For the sake of the actors, they often didn't carry full backpacks on the show, but occasionally you'd see a character in a full backpack harness. Since Marauder makes their accessories so affordable, I bought six waist belts as well as four full harnesses so I could change my mind down the road if I wanted to. Kirby, Cage, and Doc would get backpacks, Doc's carrying the extra water. Kirby and Cage's backpacks would carry their canteens and entrenching tools. Little John would get the radio, as he often did in the series. Sarge, they hit the radio! Doc would get a medic satchel, and the rest would get five personal first aid kits. Unfortunately, the medic satchel was mistakenly switched with an ammo bandolier, but Marauder's customer service assured me a replacement is on the way, so I'm not worried about it. 
Doc also needed a sticker sheet of medic insignias for his helmet and left arm, which they also supply. I even got clever and took a little sliver of the sticker sheet from Doc's medic insignia, cut out a little white rectangle, and slapped it on Lieutenant Hanley's helmet to give him his lieutenant stripe. Didn't need to use any paint. They also offer rank insignia, which I plan to order soon as well. They were out of stock at the time I placed my original order. The weapons were straightforward, and Marauder thankfully offers all of them. Cage and Little John have their M1 Garands, complete with bayonets with functional sheaths. Kirby gets his BAR, complete with working bipod. There's a Thompson for Saunders. Regrettably, it's not the M1928A1 model, but the later M1A1. If you don't look too closely, it fits the bill. And Hanley gets his M1 carbine. Marauder even offers the proper ammunition pouches for each weapon, except the carbine, oddly. I made sure Doc had a bandage in his hand, a rather cool accessory they offer. Marauder's arsenal also provides Hanley and Saunders with their 1911 sidearms complete with working holsters. And I also grabbed five grenades, one for each fighting man. But the hardest part, and the most important, was picking out the heads. It's all in the faces, and since these weren't purpose sculpted, I agonized over which faces and hair colors would resemble the actors as closely as possible. Marauder thankfully offers a wide variety of face sculpts with a wider choice of hair colors. While the heads are given various names to reflect different nationalities, I disregarded that. Their hair would be covered by pot helmets, so duplicate faces would really stand out regardless of hair color. After a very long time, I decided on the following. For Saunders, I chose Logan, with light brown hair. The actual blonde color they use is a true yellow that isn't realistic. The light brown looks closer to Vic Morrow's natural blonde. For Hanley, I thought Nigel with black hair would be ideal, but things changed when I saw Nigel next to Ivan in person. See, for Cage, I originally chose Ivan. Initially, I thought Ivan would be the better Cage and Nigel would be Hanley, but when I saw them in person, I realized Ivan would be a better Hanley and Nigel a near-perfect Cage. Just make sure you get Ivan with black hair. The brown hair isn't as dark as it looks on the website. For Kirby, I selected Hans with brown hair. He had a rather cavalier smirk on his face that reminded me of Jack Hogan. And with the helmet on, you'd never know his hairline wasn't the same as the actor's. For Doc, I chose Fritz with brown hair. Conlon Carter had a unique nose and an often somber to serious face. So once the helmet was on him, it was as close as I could get all things considered. For Little John, I needed a real bruiser, since the figures themselves aren't differing heights and he wouldn't be towering over the rest like he should. The story had to be on his face that he was actor Dick Peabody. I picked Hank with black hair. Again, the helmet would conceal the differences in their haircuts. It was a hell of a lot of fun building these from the parts they sent. The belts are easily attached to the figures as they're designed to separate at the waist to install them. A very nice design touch. They say in a slip they send you that you might need heat to free up factory stiff joints. It's a nice warning to provide, but honestly, all of my figures were just fine. Just going slowly on the first poses to get the joints moving and everything worked without issue. The heads go on very, very tightly, so I used heat on three of them to get them attached. But that's a good thing because none of these heads rattle around on their necks. Marauder has truly delivered top quality action figures here. Just for comparison's sake, they're the same scale as the modern G.I. Joes and the Ultimate Soldier World War II figures from the early aughts. However, they're superior in every way to both the modern Joes and the Ultimate Soldier figures. The Joes are far too loose in the joints and not nearly as well articulated. The Ultimate Soldier figures are gummy and, frankly, well-intended but a subpar result all around. Marauder has created an absolute crackerjack figure line with their World War II offerings. The prices are great, the fun of building your own figures is amazingly satisfying, and they inadvertently made it possible for me to build the action figures I've always wanted, the heroes of combat. One last thing about the articulation, though. Marauder shows the figures in awesome rifle-aiming poses with the rifle butts tucked into their armpits. While this pose is possible with the figures, I haven't quite figured out how to achieve it like they have. Hey, Marauder, 
A video tutorial would be welcome on how to do this perfectly. If I had any criticism of the Marauder figures, it would be the lack of options in their British World War II line. They only offer a single P-40 pattern uniform soldier body, with options for a rifleman, submachine gunner, Bren gunner, and an officer. I'd buy a slew of Brits in a heartbeat if they offered them in P-37 pattern uniforms and British paratrooper Denison smocks, so I could have some home guard and some market garden paratroops. I'd also really love some RAF pilots and officers in P-37 battle dress. I say this without exaggeration. Marauders action figures are the best modern figures I've ever seen. Hands down, there is no contest, and they cannot be beat by anything that Hasbro or Mattel or any other toy company is doing. I'm going to buy the current Brit soldiers they offer, because I want to support this toy maker in the hopes that they will offer more Brit World War II options. Their products are that good. The fans are doing the best work.